so good. Today we actually decided to go to school, beer school. Welcome to RCC Connections. I'm Kathy Cheek and we're going to tell you what it's about to make beer. So we filled up this space between the buckets with a little bit of hot water, okay? And what that'll do is that when we dump this in here to start draining is it will allow the, the grains to stay fluffy so that the, the wort, the sweet malts will drain out without getting stuck. So we start out with the absolute basics. We we'll start out with just something like um, some flavored malt, which we just heat up and we just dump in some water, cool it down, add some yeast. And then the following week, we, we kick up each week, we go to a different technique, which is a little bit more involved. So that's what we did on first week. We just opened up a can of malt, dumped it in some warm water, added some yeast, we have beer. No control, no, no flexibility, no nothing. The following week, we actually did what's called a partial mash, where we actually replaced some of the liquid malt and dry malt extract with uh, actual barley malt, and that gives us a little bit more control. And then we're kicking it up another notch this week, where we go completely from the very beginning to the very end with malt. And as we go through the weeks, we're, we're, we're going from kind of like the journey that a home brewer would take over years, we're compressing down to six weeks. And so by, by the fifth or sixth week, we'll actually start troubleshooting, for instance, uh, problem beers. So I'll doctor these beers up with different problems and bring them in and we'll have to identify, you know, this one's been set out in the sun too much, it's been skunk, and this one has butterscotch flavors or some sort of bacterial contamination and so forth. So, well, what it is, bottom line is, over six weeks, it's an evolution. We're going evolutionary from the beginning to the advanced homebrew. We need to go ahead and add the hops, okay? Now there are three different kinds of hops. There are bittering hops, there are flavor hops, and there's aroma hops. And it just, and it's the same hop, it just depends on when you add it. Well, I wanted to learn more about the uh, brewing process in general, and I've been brewing on and off for about 15 years. Um, but I've always kept it on the simple side, and I've always wanted to take that next step. So coming here, I thought I would, would be able to learn everything I could about it. So what do you want to do with your experience here? Is this just kind of for yourself, mm -hmm. for home, or are you wanting to make a business out of it? What no, just for friends and family. I've, I've always loved brewing. Um, I make a little bit of wine also, so it's just a, another hobby of mine. So tell me, what, what do you like about it? Um, I love the different styles of beer. Um, I like learning about where they come from, all the different uh, ingredients that goes into it. I love to cook, so making beer just kind of falls right in line with that. And so what's mm -hmm. class been like so far? Oh, it's been great. Ken's a great instructor. Class has been fun. We get to sample beer, as you've seen today. So how could you go wrong with that? <laughs> so we'll go ahead and crank that guy up. The hour starts when it starts boiling. Okay. Yeah. And that's when we start adding hops and, and um, other things. Okay, so we're going to collect, keep an eye on this, it's getting a little, little down. Now the amount of water that we prepared for rinsing, I, we did six gallons. The idea is, is that you want to have enough, more than enough. Because what's going to happen is if you don't have enough, well you're going to have to stop what you're doing, go heat up some more water, and then continue on, right? So we always have extra left over for the rinse. So Always have extra. We want, five we want six, six and a quarter, six and a half, because we're going to boil off one gallon per hour. Okay. All right. That is 162. Okay, here comes the magic. All right, so what are we going to do? We're going to dump this, we're going to dump this straight on in. Got, a, got me a pair of gloves? There you go. Thank you. I just need, so we're going to dump this straight on. This is at 162 right now. And so uh, we're going to take it straight on in, OK? Here it goes. Come on. 
Sure. All right. What we need to do is make sure this thing is good and mixed up and that there's really no lumps. And that's generally not a problem if you use an all grain. There generally won't be any lumps. Now, if you do something like an oatmeal, like an oatmeal stout or something like that, you could end up with lumps of oatmeal in there. And you just got to hunt, hunt them down and crush them up. And you can probably smell it by now. Yeah. It smells good, doesn't it? Well, they're, they're, the, the people that want to do this are, are what I call DIYers, do-it-yourselfers. You have to, first off, you have to appreciate good beer. But you also have to be a do-it-yourselfer because you can very easily go to any grocery store and get good beer. But you also have to be a do-it-yourselfer. So, you know, it's like, hey, you got this great beer and it's like, hey guys, check this out. Not only is it great beer, but guess what? I made it myself. Check it out. So it's the difference between, say, going to Harris Teeter and buying a, a, uh, a birthday cake and baking in the oven yourself. I think there's a little bit more satisfaction, at least for a do-it-yourself, or that, that you've actually done it yourself. Yeah. This is something I've always wanted to try. So I've, I've never had time. And so I even had one of those kids at home. I was like, all right, I'm going to brew my own beer. I'm going to try this. And uh, never did it. It's busy. Well, this forces me to, all right, Getting someone who knows what they're doing. I can go here, I can practice, I can do it, I can learn. And uh, so far, it's been great. You know, I've learned more than probably three weeks than I probably ever would have learned on my own. So have you gone home to try to brew any of your own yet? Not yet, not yet. But, I mean, I have the stuff, you know, right now, I think there's like one or two more classes. So the best part is I'm just gonna learn as much as I can and then kind of put it all together at the end and do my own thing. <laughs> so do you have any goals to do anything with it beyond just making it for home? Well, you, you know, you never know. I mean, I have friends of mine that own restaurants. I have friends that, you know, do, you know, that uh, actually brew beer and that sort of thing. And, you know, after my career is, is done or maybe down the road, I mean, you never know. So having something like this would be a lot of fun. You know, I think that I would enjoy working at a brewery if I wasn't, you know, doing the chiropractic thing. Right, right, right. <laughs> so, so, but overall, I think that it, it, one thing, it's fun to do it at home. I mean, it's enjoyable. It's, to me, it's relaxing. You know, and then the second thing is that uh, if I got really good at it, you never know. I mean, it could be a, a career down the road that'd be pretty, pretty fun to do. <laughs> so what, what's been the most maybe intriguing or th something you didn't really expect to come out of it? The, the neatest thing to me I found is like where the extra stuff comes from. Like the, you learn about the ingredients to beer. So you learn about the malt and the yeast and you learn about hops and you learn where they're grown, where they come from. Like I didn't realize malt, most of the malt they get has to be in cold climates. And most of it comes from Canada you know, overseas in Europe. So, I mean, stuff like that's pretty neat. You know, I didn't know that, and then that's what goes into making beer. So we're replacing all of the liquid malt, all the dried malt, we're replacing completely with nothing but barley. That's why it's called all grain. And, our, and we get more control because we're gonna control the mash temperature. So the closer we dial that mash to 148, the drier the beer. The closer we dial that mash to 158, the fuller the body to beer. Now, in this particular picnic cooler, I expect about a 10 to 12 degree drop. Now, when you do this, it, it's, it's probably going to be a little different. So, you might get an 8 degree drop, you might get a 15 degree drop. But as long as you hit that 148 to 158, you're great. It's going to happen, right? Don't try to chase it around. Just make a note so that the next time you do it, you can say, well, my system, I get a 14 degree drop. So instead of heating at 12 degrees above my target temperature, I need to go 14 degrees above my target temperature. And then it's the same every time, as long as you're using the same picnic cooler uh, every time. And by the way, it's not just called the picnic cooler. This is, the, this is called the mash ton, because that's where we're doing the mash. And ton is German for container. So this is our mash container or mash ton. But I've always loved beer. And uh, I don't drink a lot of beer, uh, but I like it and I like all kinds. And uh, when I first moved down here, to answer your question finally, I had bought a beer making kit and I never used it. Uh, it disappeared. Um, I bought one about three years ago when I was visiting my mother in Kansas City. And I said, well, I'm gonna make some beer. Uh, well, I was intimidated when I got back here. I have a small kitchen that type of thing, you know, just a refrigerator and a stove. And I said, oh brother, I don't know whether I, whether I can do this or not. I bought some recipe kits and stuff like that. They've sat there for two and a half years. Uh, then finally I 
decided to pick up the Rockingham County or the Rockingham Community College booklet that you send out with mm -hmm. all your classes. And I said, you've got to be kidding me. There's a beer making class here. I said this to my wife. I said, I think I'm going to do that. And uh, maybe it'll get me off the dime and I'll make 50 bottles of beer anyway. <laughs> so that's why I, and I'm really happy I did because this guy's great and this college is great. And uh, even though the weather's been pretty nasty, it's been a revelation. I probably learned more. Uh, I'm not intimidated anymore. Good. I don't know whether I can go home and do it, but I'm not intimidated. So I just may, maybe need a little, little help along the way, and I think I'm going to be able to make some beer. And I also signed up for the, his one-day class in Eden, which is very close to me, where I live. And I'm going to, I don't know whether what value that'll be uh, compared to this, but uh, I'm going to do that too. Ken Pierce has made it seem, and I think he's totally credible, uh, this is not all that complicated. Uh, you can make it complicated and get, you know, I'm not going to go there. I'm going to kind of keep it simple. Stupid. <laughs> Follow that kiss. And roll. I think I'm like at this level two where, uh, uh, that where we mixed up this second batch a couple of weeks ago. Um, uh, not the simplest, but hardly the most difficult. So I really want to be involved in hearing him and seeing how he does this more complicated stuff, and especially the bottles and the sanitation. I am concerned about that because I guess none of us want to poison ourselves or anything. Or any of you. So, uh, so I'm very interested in seeing that part of it. The, the way, the proper way to do this uh -huh. is squirt once ah, and stick. Sticky. Once you prime it, it, all it takes is just one good squirt. Squirt and stick, squirt and stick. Okay. What's the rinse in water for? Why are we well, we're going to, well, it's Clorox. We're sanitizing with Clorox. So we're going to need to uh, put some fresh water in it. And then we're going to follow behind and we're going to rinse all our bottles. So let's just rinse all the bottles. We've got 96 positions here, or thereabouts. So we'll fill up this bottle tree from top to bottom. We're going to use the transfer. But we need to san anything that touches the cold beer, we've got to sanitize. So we need to dip this in our Clorox anything. Now, there is a difference between sterilization and sanitation. Sanitation, we're just trying to knock down the wild yeast and bacteria to a manageable level. And sterilization, we want total absence of life. We're not looking for sterilization. We just want things to be under control. I like this college. I'd never been here before. I lived in the, uh, Eden, uh, the Stoneville Eden area for 25 years and never had an occasion to come over here just because I already had my education and stuff. So this has been a revelation. In fact, next year I'll probably look at maybe you got some other interesting classes that I'll be interested in. Absolutely. <laughs> I'll make jewelry or something. <laughs> no, I mean, who knows? Who right? knows? All right. You well, got to right. have some hobbies when you get older. <laughs> great. Oh, yeah. We're going to do bottling today, which is, which is one technique for preparing the finished beer. Uh, and then we're also going to do kegging, where we take our finished beer and we're going to, instead of waiting three weeks for the bottles to naturally condition and be ready to drink, we're going to actually keg our beer next week and it's going to be ready in 15 minutes. Okay, so we've got the beer in here. Yeah, here we go. We got the beer. This is five gallons of flat, uncarbonated beer. Now, we should give it a taste. Everybody grab a cup. Okay, you have to taste it because there's no point in bottling if it tastes bad. Right? Yeah, do, there's no point in bottling it. So what we do is just go ahead and take us, take us, you know, not much, just, you'd only need, oh man, that come out fast. Just a little sample. And this is flat. It's not, it's not going to be great, but it doesn't have any really truly objectionable, like awful flavors, like something went horribly wrong. And that's why well, you have to sample it. So now we're ready to go ahead and do the bottling. This is, a bot this is a bottling wand. Okay, so it just goes on the end of this guy here. And this goes on here. And this has like a little valve on the, on the tip. 
So when it hits the bottom of the beer bottle, it should open up. Now it doesn't always close when it comes out, so you gotta be careful, but it will open up when it hits the bottom of the beer bottle. And what we do is we fill it all the way to the very top, and then we lift it off. As we lift it off the bottom, as we fill it up, when we go all the way to the top, as soon as we lift it off, this takes up space, and as you pull it out, it will leave exactly the right amount of head space for the cap. And then hand it off to the next person who will cap it, and then the, the, the bottle loader is the one who's like handing the bottles, handing the bottles, keep them going, okay? Everybody clear on that? All right, who's gonna do what? There it went. Yeah, you gotta be hooked in. Okay, yeah, we that rubber thing is just keep it from flying all the way to the top. We got so that. we'll go up one more. One more. Mm. There it goes. That's it. Now. Wow. Hmm. You got there. You go. There you go. See, that's the idea. We'll have this knocked out in no time. Well, I think it's it's just the overall educational process. I mean, I'm taking people who have who. They have an idea that they want to make it themselves, but they really have no idea of the big world out there. You know, there's 20 some odd different styles of beer, and there's three or four different subcategories. And most of them, they're thinking, well, you know, I would really like to have, like, be able to make my own pale ales. But there's so much more out there. It's like, it's like you have pale ales, but what kind of pale ale do you want? You got English, you got American, you've got you know, strong pale ales, IPAs, you've got weak, you know, you got your special bitters, your extra special, you know, there's so many different kinds. And what's really great when we do this class is that we actually have a beer tasting along the way and we actually line up, say, well, today we're going to talk about pale ales, for instance. And it's like, it's not what they expect. It's like, you got your English ones and they then start seeing how they're similar, but they're so different amongst each other and it's just that that's the delightful part is just seeing that their their whole world knowledge of beers has just really been expanded out. I mean I remember you know you, it, there's recurring themes with these guys and, and just like all the other beers that we've had the previous weeks you can you smell it and you smell like that spicy notes same way different different manufacturers different monks but you know they end up coming the same style yeah Mmm, this one has some extra caramel in it. Yeah. Yeah. You taste the caramel notes? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Almost like it's got some toffee sort of flavors. Yeah. I almost say they use some dark crystal mm -hmm. in it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, that is a good one. I like this one. Which one is that one that we just passed around? <laughs> that is the Le Trappe. Cheers. 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 Delicious. Ah, that is good. All right, so we, as usual, we'll just let's give it a good sniff. I can, I can smell a little bit of aroma in there, eh? Yeah. yeah. Oh, the hops just jump right yeah, out, don't right. they? That hits you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lots of hops in there, lots of caramel. Yeah. Real good after finish, too. This is typical for an American uh, strong ale, otherwise known as an IPA. So. I like the little burn over there. Mm hmm. That's from uh, high carbonation levels, too. In Eden on Washington Street, we've got a, uh, a building down there that the city of Eden has graciously uh, allowed us to, uh, to use. And uh, we're going to be setting up a facility there to do off-site brewing for the brewing distillation and fermentation program. So where are we on the site? What kind of what's going to be happening? What all is going to be there? Uh, right now the site is pretty much empty, but we're in the process of having a contractor come in and put in uh, some ventilation equipment for uh, ducting off the fumes. Um, some of the classes here at the college, the plumbing class is going to be going over and putting in a sink and doing some plumbing for it, and the electrical classes are going to be going over and putting in some new lights and doing some work to uh, prepare the, the site for us to use to teach the classes, hopefully starting next fall. Really? Not far away. The equipment has been ordered and hopefully will be arriving in about a week or so for uh, the use for the brewing program. 
and uh, once the uh, contractor comes in and does the ducking and then the students can finish the, the, the wiring and the plumbing, it will be ready to go. And is there going to be, do you know any more details about the actual site, like there's a brewing section, a tasting room? Yes, there's going to be a section for, for brewing. It'll all be in one large room, so even if you're sitting there doing your tasting, you'll still be able to see the brewing equipment sitting there. So it's, it's not a huge building, but it's large enough to, for us to get started right now. And so you're helping out with this particular beer school. Yes, I've decided to uh, come and take this school to uh, learn a more, little bit more about it since I'm involved in trying to help set it up. I, I'm the type that I like to learn as much about it as I can if I'm going to be involved in helping to teach other people. So what, what's been the most interesting thing you've been learning along the way? Um, just learning just how precise this actually is. It truly is a science. I mean, it's, uh, originally I thought it was just throwing some ingredients together and cooking it, but uh, it very much is a science. It's right down to, uh, to the second in which you're, you're doing. It's very interesting. And so do you plan to start making your own brew? Uh, yes, I think I may. Uh, it it's definitely sounds interesting and I'd like to do it. Um, but it looks like there's going to be a lot involved in getting this program here at the college, so I'll probably be doing a lot involved with the college at, at the start. Well, what do you think about the college entering and doing this kind of stuff? It's a new venture for them. I think it's a great thing uh, in helping to uh, set up the, the program. We've been talking to a lot of people in the state, and there's a big interest in this. Uh, the, the small brewers and the companies that are doing brewing are really interested in this. They're looking for people that, that have an understanding of not just the brewing process, but also the technology that's involved in the commercial production of beer. And that's going to be a big part of what we're doing with this program, is developing people with a skill set that not only allows them to go out here and help make beer, but also help in, in the process of bottling, packaging, shipping, production. Believe it or not, the shell has come a long way since when we first started the partnership with the City of Eden. Uh, the floors, the walls, everything has been redone. The electrical, we had to get some gas put in mm -hmm. um, for the future brewing plans that we've got. So we're very excited. Uh, the equipment's been ordered and uh, has um, been shipped, so we should be getting that and start the installation for the equipment. So people from the street will see big stainless fermenters and people, you know, busy uh, in here. And we're going to have a tasting room uh, that our woodworking program is going to help us to make. Uh, so we'll have tastings for the community. Uh, as far as instruction, we're going to be having a tasting room class uh, that will help people to get jobs in tasting rooms and also for local wineries and businesses to learn about tasting rooms and you know what kind of glasses to use for what style of beer, wine, that kind of thing. We're going to be having a uh, Guinness program uh, for, with the Guinness Stout uh, uh, Institute. Uh, we'll be doing some ABC permit classes, some bartending classes, and then we're going to stick with the good old standbys of how to brew your own beer uh, and different styles of beer. And we've had a very successful beer school, which I know you've visited. And uh, so things are growing. The hops, we um, are the only college in North Carolina that has a hop yard. Uh, it was planted last year and really will be mature in three years. We have three different varieties of hops. Uh, that have been planted there that are based on research from um, the Ag um, Cooperative Extension and NC State research. And uh, hops is a very viable crop in North Carolina, and there is a lot of interest from local breweries on agriculture and making local products like malting grains, growing grains, and hops, and all of the, um, the agricultural products that go into beer. Uh, it will allow breweries to do fresh hops brewing as well as be able to have local uh, products in their beer and try some new things. That's really cool. And the ABC permit, is that, tell me a little bit about that, is helping businesses know what they have to do to get the permit? That's correct, and it's a certification for servers uh, on responsible alcohol use and, and serving and what to do and um, recognizing when somebody you know, may be having too much and uh, you know the different laws and responsibilities. 
So that's really will help people who are working or want to be working in the hospitality industry? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Okay. And the closest place to get this type of training is in Greensboro. And so there are many people driving to the Bartending Institute in Greensboro from this area and in, up into Virginia, Winston-Salem. So we're excited to partner with them to bring those classes here. All right. And um, talk about the bartending school a little bit. What's that, what does that involve? We hope to have a full certification program in bartending uh, where people will get a, a actual credential to be able to get a job as a bartender uh, with uh, catering companies, uh, hotels, restaurants, uh, and you know, a lot of the um, retro drinks, I understand, have gotten popular, like sidecars, and I don't know what that is, but this <laughs> class will teach you. And we also are talking about doing a, um, a bartending, a home bartending class for people maybe around the holidays that want to learn, you know, to make some special signature drinks and things, you know, something fun in continuing ed. Now, is the bartending, did I understand that that will give you a certificate from the state? Yes, that's correct, with the, um, the uh, North Carolina uh, Bartenders Institute, yes. So that's really a big deal for it this area. Good. It's great, yes. That is great. Okay. And when are we expecting this might be up and running for folks to be able to come by and see? We're hoping this summer. Uh, we're, we've been very ambitious since this whole thing came together, and we're just keeping uh, moving forward and we're, we're so excited about it and expect to have uh, some events and a grand opening probably this summer. And tell me about the, is, did you work with the City of Eden? Is there a partnership there? Absolutely. Okay. The City of Eden has been great. They have done uh, their maintenance department and uh, the city folks have done the work to get this ready and then the, the college is providing all the supplies and equipment and the instruction here. Uh, and we'll, you know, pay to keep it maintained. Okay, great. Anything else you want to add? I just think this is going to be great for the city of Eden, and it will bring people downtown and spur, uh, you know, a lot of ancillary um, economic development. Well, when you go to beer school, it's all about getting to this, the actual beer bottles. These really won't be ready for another three weeks, but it's really what it's all about. Thanks for watching RCC Connections. I'm Kathy Cheek. We'll see you next time.